I was asked a question on YouTube this morning on how to accurately diagnose a defrost issue in a Sub-Zero freezer. How do you determine whether it's your control board that has gone bad, your terminator switch, or your heaters? Uh, I'll show you that. Defrost issues can definitely lie in your defrost system. The power your control board sends down to your heaters uh, can be interrupted by your termination switch or your thermostat, which is used interchangeably. But there are other mechanical functions that you have to check off the list before you uh, go and diagnose this. One, is your condenser clean? Check. Is your fan spinning up top? Is your condenser fan running correctly and not overheating your compressors, which could prolong run times and cause a frost up? Does your door down there in your freezer seal all the way around? When you open the door, is the evaporator fan on when there is power going through the circuit? Uh, meaning that is your when your compressor runs, does your fan spin? I can hear the fan here. It's running. Do your lights go off when you shut the door? All right. We have crossed off all of the mechanical things that we need for this unit to operate properly. Let's get into the defrost issues. Before we physically diagnose this machine, we're going to find our wiring diagram. You'll find it. Just start taking the machine apart. It'll be somewhere accessible. Uh, on a Sub-Zero, or any refrigerator for that matter, uh, an electronic unit like we are working on right now, we want to hone in on the brain of the machine, which is your control board here. Your control board is going to be what delegates the power to every part in the machine. So, obviously, let's start by looking at terminal P10 which is defrost heater, okay? Just gonna highlight that, all right? We're gonna find that on the control board inside the machine, and then we are going to begin to trace it, all right? Now, uh, what I mean by that is we're gonna look at our schematic here, and we are going to trace from P10 right down to our defrost terminator, then through to our defrost heater, and back up, sorry guys, to our neutral, out to the wall. So this is the circuit that we are going to be working with trying to determine, are we getting power? Are we losing power somewhere? Are we getting power all the way through and is a part not working? Uh, let's go look. Let's unclip power to the machine or unplug the machine at the wall and we're going to find the control board cover and remove the cover exposing the control board. All right, the next step once we expose the control board is we do have power off now. There is no power going through the machine. We are going to remove that blue wire for the defrost heater from its terminal. I use a needle nose plier and we take the wire off. Uh, I'm going to restore power to this unit now and we're going to go into a defrost mode. We're going to take our probes on our voltmeter and we're going to take an AC reading at the terminal on the control board. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna restore power to the unit and throw it into defrost, and we're gonna take a meter reading on the control board. Uh, I use an amp meter, so don't be thrown off by me clamping this to the ceiling. It's just so that you guys can see. So let's turn it on. I hear the compressors go on. I'm gonna hold that ice button for about 15 seconds. And when I do that, and this thing goes into defrost like it just did, that control board should be shooting 120 volts off of the defrost terminal. Now, I'm gonna block you, but I'm gonna ground to a screw in here, um, maybe up here in the middle of the unit, uh, just to be out of the way so you can see. And then I'm gonna go to the terminal on the defrost heater, and I'm gonna see what I get on my voltmeter. 123 volts. That is sufficient. This machine's control board is working when I manually throw it into defrost. Does that mean the control board's good? Uh, more than likely, yes. Could the control board not? be going into defrost on its own only when I do it manually? Yes, but more times than not, no. We've passed the test. The control board is sending 120 volts when I tell it to. Let's make our way down the schematic to our next spot, the defrost terminator, and determine whether we're getting the voltage from the board all the way to the terminator. Could there be a break in the line before the terminator? Could the terminator be getting power and not just be doing its job? Yes, so let's go look. All right, the next step is that we have to take off the cover to the freezer evaporator, and we have to expose it. And when we get down there, we will see 
our freezer evaporator. And on the freezer evaporator, we'll have heaters. And we're looking at one part back here called your terminator switch. And what it is, well, it's a switch, it is a thermostat. And when this machine is cold enough, it will actually close and allow power through the switch to your heaters, which then get hot and defrost your coil. Uh, the heaters are generally, usually on a timer and they come on every couple hours. So let's go ahead, throw this into defrost and see if we get power through our termination switch. If we don't get power through our terminator switch and this machine's at temperature zero degrees, our coil has been defrosted, it's been running for about an hour, it should be perfect. We should be getting power to our heaters. If we don't, I would go ahead and say that we have a bad terminator switch. Let's test it out. Let's go right up here. We should be at temperature, very cold. All right, 15 seconds. Let's go see if we have power going through our terminator and going to our heaters. Power at the terminator switch, no power at the heaters. In this scenario, my first inclination would be we have a bad terminator switch. Let's go a little further. We're going to jump out the terminator switch now with a special tool that allows us to get power to the heaters. Once we put that tool in and we have power to the heaters and this gets nice and hot, we will have confirmed that we have a bad terminator switch. All right, so I created this terminator switch uh, as a jump out tool. I basically just cut off the end of the terminator switch and wire nutted the uh, switch closed. Now I put it into defrost and what we are going to do is we are going to go down and take a look at our terminator switch, which has power, but does not uh, allow power through to the heaters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unclip that. And I'm going to clip in my jumped out terminator switch which will be permanently closed, allowing power through to the heaters. So let's go ahead and clip that in. And now let's go and, wow, we have power at the heaters now. So that confirms it. I'll hear those heaters come on and get hot. And our terminator switch is the problem. I'll reinstall a new terminator switch and mount it properly on the low side of the coil. And that will fix our defrost uh, in this scenario. Now there are other scenarios here. Let's imagine that we were getting power through to the heaters all the time. At that point, I would focus my energy on the heaters. I would ohm out the heater. I would get uh, the ohm reading of a, of a new heater. You can get that from Sub-Zero or in a service manual. And I would test my heaters out that way. I would ohm it out and I would ohm out the old one. And if I had a, uh, you know, if, the, if, the, if it was open or uh, didn't have a, a good reading, I would then say I have bad heaters, but that's rare. It's usually the terminator switch in, in this scenario. Uh, the last thing that I'll say is, let's say that everything's been checking out. We defrost the unit. We turn it back on. We get it cold. We manually put the heaters on. The terminator switch uh, stays closed, and it stays closed for a sufficient amount of time for that heater to fully defrost at that point. And probably only at that point would I then focus my attention to the control board. Maybe the control board is not going into defrost and I have a bad control board and my terminator and my heater is just fine. Um, but regardless, there's a lot of common sense you have to use when diagnosing these issues. But what I've shown you is that the power always comes from the control board. It goes through to your terminator. If your terminator is working, it'll go through to your defrost heaters. And if that is the whole system, then you can start to devise what is wrong and what isn't wrong using a voltmeter and constantly putting it into a manual defrost and checking your power in different areas of the machine. I hope that helps.